Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Portrait. I'm here, Mr. Robert. The NASCAR Cup Series at Darlington Raceway, the 122nd race, the Lady in Black, the track that's too tough to tame, the Goodyear 400 throwback weekend, 400.238 miles, and right, one of the toughest tracks in NASCAR, 293 laps. Three stages, 90, 95, and 108. This is the 19th 400-mile race in Darlington history. Not only do we have throwback, we have a new car that's never been on Darlington before. The fact that Darlington has been around since 1950, the second oldest track in NASCAR. All seven generations of cars have been right at Darlington. Some better than others. We've had door-to-door -door finishes. We've had people winning by 13 laps. What are we going to get in 2022 with, ne with this gen next gen car? I don't know. No one does. That's what makes this so cool. No one knows. So, last year at Darlington, or so Darlington has hosted the Southern 500 since 1950. It's had a spring race from in 1952, 1957 through 2004, and then since 2020. When NASCAR returned from the pandemic in 2020, they actually had three races that year in Darlington. They had two races, kind of a makeup. Then they had the Southern 500. In 1950 through 1952, it was 1.25 miles. In 1953, they actually re kind of repaved it a little bit, re kind of re did it all. And through 1970, it was 1.375. And then in 1970, it became the current 1.366 mile surface. Now, in 1997, they did a repave and a rework. They literally fit, flipped the front stretch and the back stretch. So what is currently the front stretch used to be the back stretch and vice versa. So it kind of makes it different as you come around to the start finish line and what you see on TV is kind of some of the older footage prior to 97. It looks different because the way the start finish line was and the way the grandstands and stuff are. Those two races in 2021, Kyle Larson. Average of 2.0 finish. Matt Gins, or Matt Martin Truex Jr., 2.5 with a win. Denny Hamlin, 3.0 with a win. What do these three guys have in common? One can drive anything with wheels. One, two of them are veterans. Championship winning veterans. So even though Denny hasn't won a championship, he's still championship quality. Kevin Harvick, 5.5. Chris Busher, 9.0. Ross Chastain, 9.0. Some of the young blood. Joey, Ham Joey Logano, 10.5. Now, if you look at the last six races at Darlington, just Darlington, the last six races, Kyle Larson only raced in three of them, still averaged a second-place finish. Kevin Harvick, 3.3 with two wins. Both of those came in 2020. Denny Hamlin, 9.0 with two wins. Martin Truex Jr., 9.7 with a win. Jo Joey Logano, 10.3. Brad Keselowski, 10.7. Eric Jones, 11.3 with a win. Now, active drivers at Darlington in their career. Kyle Larson, 8 starts, 5.5 average finish. Danny Hamlin, 19 starts, 7.1 average finish, 4 wins. Eric Jones, 8 starts, 10.1 average finish with a win. Martin Truex, 19 starts, 10.8 average finish, 2 wins. Brad Keselowski, 11.1 with a win, 16 starts. Kyle Busch, 20 starts at Darlington, 12.0 average finish with a win. Kevin Harvick, 28 starts at Darlington, 12.4 average finish, three wins. Now, these intermediate tracks like at Darlington, Atlanta, Vegas, Homestead, etc., there's 13 in the 2022 season, five in the playoffs. So far this year, in those intermediate tracks, Ross Chastain has averaged 2.5. William Byron, 3.0 with a win. Alex Bowman, 5.5 with a win. The hack. Chase Elliott, 7.5. Martin Truex Jr., 8.0. Kurt Busch, 8.0. Logano, 11.5. If we look at those same mile and a half tracks, or same intermediate tracks in 2021, 12 races, Kyle Larson had 5 wins, average of 5.1. He's not even averaging 11th are better so far this year. Kevin Harvick, 7.5. He's not even averaging 11th place this year so far. Denny Hamlin, 8.0 with two wins. Kyle Busch, 9.3. He's not even on the other list. Um, 
Kyle had a win last year. William Byron, 9.5 with a win. And this year, 3.0 with a win. Mark, Martin Truex Jr., 10.0 with a win last year. Austin Dillon, 11.0. Now, on those same mile, again, the mile and a half intermediate track is the bread and butter of NASCAR. Five in the playoffs, 13 in the regular season. The last 40, so since 2019. Kevin Harvick, 7.9 average finish, four wins. Martin Truex, 9.3 with three wins. Kyle Busch, 9.9 with three wins. Kyle Larson, five wins, 10.7 average finish. Denny Hamlin, 11.2 with seven wins. Brad Kozlowski, 11.5 with three wins. Logano, 12.1 with three wins. During those 40 races, 15 different winners. So... Who is going to win the Goodyear 400? Let's cover points first. So right now, after 11 races, we have nine different winners. Chase Elliott, William Byron with two wins, Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, Ross Chastain with two wins, Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe, Austin Cedric, and Denny Hamlin. Right now, Ryan Blaney is second in points with six top tens. He has 50 50 points out of the lead behind Chase Elliott for that regular season championship. Now, that regular season championship gets you 15 playoff points. That's equivalent to three wins. Martin Truex Jr. with five top tens. Then Joe Logano, Christopher Bell, Eric Camarola, Kevin Harvick, Eric Jones. Currently the last playoff spot. He is plus three to Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon is plus 10 to Tyler Reddick. Daniel Suarez is 17th, minus 21. Chris Buescher is 19th, minus 32. Kurt Busch, 38. Or minus, is 20th position, minus 38. Bubba Wallace is in 21st, minus 48. What is wrong with 23-11 this year? And then Brad Kozlowski is 30th in points right now. He is plus 12. So what that means is that Brad Kowalowski can get a win and stay in the top 30 in points of in the playoffs. Now, Denny Hamlin, he is 23rd currently. He has that win, though, but he's 23rd. So as long as we don't have 16 different winners this year and he makes the playoffs, he needs to stay in the top 30. He is plus 54 to that 30th position. Now, Brad Kowalowski, we all know... If it wasn't for the penalty, the 100-point penalty, he would be up higher up in points. So, if it wasn't for that 100-point penalty, he would be currently 16th in points, 12 out of the playoffs. But instead, he is 30th, plus one point from falling out of the 30th. Is that correct? Double-check that real quick. No, I'm sorry, four points on, yeah, he's four points above Harrison Burton for that 30, for the 30th position. So, he needs to stay in the top 30, he needs to win. Just like Ricky Stenhouse was 31st in points, finished second this week, and now he's 27th. Drivers, there's seven drivers. Hold on. There's 12 drivers that have won, hold on. <laughs> There's nine drivers in the past two years that have won that have not won this year. There is three other drivers that one of them has won in 2019. The other two are on the verge of getting their first career win that could win any time. Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex Jr., Joe Logano, Christopher Bell, Eric Amarillo, Kevin Harvick, Austin Dillon, Kurt Busch, Bubba Wallace. They all won in 2020 or 2021. Have not won in 2022. Eric Jones won in 2019 at Darlington. He has yet to win, but he's been running up front some of that 43 car. Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez. They've ran up front. I mean, Tyler Reddick was literally had a win at Bristol in his hand. He could see the checkered flag. Yeah, and he got taken out by his buddy. <laughs> I mean, that was just sad. First career win right there. Uh, but, you know, he's ran well this year, though. Besides that, Tellerick is sitting 16th overall in points. Has a second place at the Bristol Dirt. Fifth Dakota. 
third at Phoenix, seventh at Vegas. So he's ran well. Daniel Suarez, the second car for Trackhouse, sitting there 17th in points. He was fourth at California, fourth at Atlanta, led laps. Um, they just need to put it ninth at Phoenix. They just need to put it all together and they can get up there. Eric Jones in at 43. He's at a third at California, ninth at Coda, sixth at Talladega, tenth at Dover. They are on the cusp of winning the race, I think. I think Darlington has been a good race for him. 43 has been fast. That was 2019 when he was in the 20 car. I believe he won at Darlington. Yeah, Darlington in 20... Yeah, 2019 he won at Darlington. Um, I mean, he had a third at Kentucky that year. He had a fifth at Kansas. So, I mean, he's ran well, just like this year as well. Um, like last year, if you look at what Richard Petty Motorsports did at Darlington, he was 32nd and 18th. Um, so, I mean, that team, they're running better. The GMS side of it, I think, has made a difference this year. They've had improved finishes over last year at this time. Because, like, last year when they went to Coda, they were 16th this year, 9th. California, they were 3rd this year. Vegas, they had bad, bad luck at Vegas. But Coda, they were 9th. Talladega, so, I mean, they led laps. They are up there at Dover. Last year, Dover, they finished 22nd this year, top 10. Um, so, he's another one on the cusp of, of winning a race, I feel. I think this year we're going to have 14 different winners going into the playoffs. Um, my four picks for the Goodyear 400. Kyle Larson, Martin Church Jr., Eric Jones, the Watermelon Man, Ross Chastain is my fourth pick. Um, I do want to mention the Denny Hamlin penalty for the wheel falling off. Um, they have, I guess, Joe Gibbs has protested or whatever it is. And so they're going to have a hearing over it. And so the crew chief, Chris Gabehart, is not suspended this week. I, I, I agree with the rule. The rule is what the rule is, because here's what could happen. And we've almost seen this. When that wheel comes off and that tire comes off, those tires aren't light. They get It gets hit and gets propelled into the stands and somebody gets hurt or, God forbid, killed. What is that going to do for our sport? So I, I like the rule. We've, we've had a couple in, in two different races now. We've had, a, you know, what, six total, I think. I don't think there's an issue with it. I think it's just some of these pit crews are just missing it. Like this one here, if you watch that pit stop, the jackman jacked the car up. He looked to the rear tire changer. Out of the corner of his eye, he seen the um, tire changer come back. I guess the nut fell out and he went to grab it off. So he moved. He thought he was done, dropped a jack, and he took off. I don't I think if the jackman would have went like this, he would have realized it and not drop that jack. Jenny Hamlin, the jack drops, you take off. And as soon as he took off, he's like, dude, the lug nut's not on. Because the lug nut ended up in Joe Logano's pit. So, I mean, it's happened twice now to call it racing, both cars. This is the biggest team it's happened to. And if we remember, Denny Hamlin has that, or Joe Gibbs does that unique pit stop where who's the front tire changer isn't the front tire changer on both sides. The choreograph is different. So they change the right side tires. The right front comes around to the left rear. The right rear comes around to the left front. So they almost crisscross when they come around. NASCAR suspended who's listed as the front tire changer since it was a front tire. So I think that's part of what, you know, NASCAR suspended their own guy. Plus, I also think that part of it is the suspension, yes. If we go to a hearing, postpone it, we have time to train somebody else to take his spot. Because you don't want to bring somebody from the experience years cold who's not done, number one, the, the choreograph routine of the pit stop. Or the single lug. So now you've got time to train somebody to cover those four weeks. Just my opinion. We'll see what happens. But hey, Goodyear 400, Darlington, Sunday, throwback weekend. Can't wait. Thanks for watching Robert's Board Show. And don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert's Board Show, your YouTube leader in sports channel content.